you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Saying to one another, What does this mean? 
But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days there will be God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even among my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoke and mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You will say the song responsibly. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea with its living things too many to number. Creatures both small and great. There move the ships and there is that revive them. Which you have made the sword. All of them move to you. To give them their glorious decision. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand and they are filled with good things. You hide your face and they are terrified. You take away their breath and they die and turn to their dust. You send forth your spirit and they are created. And so you have your face your earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they swell. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Hallelujah. The second reading is a, a reading from the book of Romans. All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does the work. Believe me that I am the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, he will do greater works than me, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. As I will ask the Father, and he will give to another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Welcome here at Trinity. 
If anyone has been discarded because of family and friends and they discover that you love someone of the same sex, love, you have a place here in the arms of Jesus. If anyone has made a mistake and feels that life is over, there is a place here in the arms of Jesus. There is a place here for anyone who seeks restoration and life. And today is Pentecost. And today it is juxtaposed with the National Gun Violence Awareness Weekend. And that is why you may see some orange. It came out late from the Bishop's office. And today is Pentecost. The day the Holy Spirit came and the day a community was broken open by the sheer act of God. Not by the hands of humans, but the sheer act of God. Some call it the birth of the church. The Yale professor, Dr. Willie James Jennings, tells us that Pentecost is the revolution of the intimate, the moment, the divine, of the divine power that signifies the presence of the Spirit through one crucial reality of life, language. Have we ever given language any thought? Think about that. As we heard earlier in the Acts of the Apostles, all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak to each other. I mean, to began to speak other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability. There were Parthians, Medes, Elamites, the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, Papilia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, and by the power of the Holy Spirit invading the human body, they heard the word of God in many languages. Not one. People didn't have to assimilate. Many languages. Because you see, to speak a language is to speak a people. God reached out to touch and take hold of the tongue, as well as the voice, the mind, the heart, and the body. And in this instance, there was a joining. And if we pay attention, we will see that the followers of Jesus are being connected in the most intimate space of language. And as I mentioned before, it includes voice, body, land, and place. Language holds identity. And history has shown us that if we forbid the language of a people, if we tell people that their language is secondary and inferior to what is wrongly thought to be a superior language, we are not only separating ourselves from that possible intimacy, we are also erasing a people. First, we start with language, culture, land, food, and so forth. But language is a gateway to many possibilities. And so, as the listeners ask, what does this mean? And some of us may have already figured it out already because it is simple. It means that basically the Holy Spirit had come and the joining had begun. The joining is still happening today. And as Dr. Jennings writes, the Spirit has announced the divine intention through the Son to reach into our lives and make each life a sight of speaking glory. Yet it requires us to open ourselves and to reach across the very real boundaries of culture, religion, ethnicity, and by doing so, we enter deeply into loving our neighbors as ourselves. Because it is a love built directly on the resurrected body of Jesus the Christ. A love that goes into the far country. A love that cannot be tamed, controlled, nor planned. And as a side note, if you read this pericope, it was by the power of the Holy Spirit that the disciples, they were transformed into apostles. By the power of the Holy Spirit, 
12 men with no outstanding credentials, no educational pedigrees, and not much to draw from, are standing before the Israelites with nothing more than a message. Think about that and how that compares to today. Today, we invest in optics, image, status, finesse, fancy equipment. There's nothing wrong with fancy equipment. <laughs> Yet a message guided by the Holy Spirit is far more powerful than the messenger. And in that, we have witness. The power is not in ourselves alone. We do not lean into our own understanding. And so we have Pentecost. A new world order energized by the movement of the spirit, breaking through all flesh and destroying social orders that find slavery useful, militarism, heroic, morality, political, truth-telling, divisive, and Jesus patriotic. In our present day, the Holy Spirit is screaming throughout this land, and then we are attuned to the wild whisper of the spirit, we will ask that scary question. Where do you want us to go and to whom? I think it's a scary question because the spirit may lead us to a place I don't want to go and then I'm gonna have to, you know, adjust my attitude. <laughs> so that is, a, that is a scary place, a question to ask because we are not the church of pre-COVID. We have lost so much and gained so much, so much. But we are here and we are standing in this Sunday of Pentecost. If we are still in the well, that's the way we've done it before. If we are holding on to dead ministries, if we are trying to get back parishioners that have chosen to go elsewhere, if we still think church is about coming into a building and it's only about us, and we misunderstand what is happening in this Pentecost moment because we are definitely in a Pentecost moment and it is a revolution that never ends. This is not about one person. This is about a community of people throughout the world. The Spirit is calling us to go out into the world and I know that I am not the only one sensing that. There's a lot of chaos happening can anyone sense the spirit? Can anyone? If not, just say no. But does anyone? Can anyone sense the spirit? It's scary and it is exciting. But in order to do this work we are to do, we must nourish ourselves with study of word, prayer, and worship, and so forth. And once we are nourished, we are to go out to feed the people. Sometimes we may have to nourish ourselves in the process of walking and going out. And like Peter and the other apostles, we will, by standing in Jesus, we will be able to stand together. And here is something to consider. And let us ask ourselves this question. Is the language of the church being attacked and silenced? by those on the outside and by those on within our midst, because the church does have a language, right? Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and so I am certain that God is concerned with every portion of our lives and that God's love is holistic. Are we on the same page there? Yeah. It's okay. Shake your shoulders, <laughs> no, it's okay. Are we on the same page? Yes. yes. All right. And so, think about this. When we say the images, no, let's back up. When we speak on matters of morality, we are called judgmental. And there is a difference between judgment and prophetically calling for a moral existence based on God. There is a difference. And don't run me out of town, but when we say the images of Christianity during January the 6th had nothing to do with Jesus, they say we have crossed the line and we are being divisive. Have you heard that? When we advocate gun laws, they cry politics. 
And we advocate for housing. They say that has nothing to do with God. And remember, we serve a holistic God. When we advocate for food justice, they incorrectly quote, well, those who help themselves. And I usually say, even the devil knows the scripture. Scripture can be used as a weapon. <laughs> when we advocate for equality education for every person in the honor of various stories, they cry to woke. When we cry for justice, they turn away and say, we should only talk about Jesus. Yes, in all of this. If they make us believe that God, Son, and Holy Spirit has nothing to do with our lives, then we will become silent. When we become silent, we become irrelevant. When we, we will withdraw and become a country club concerned with ourselves and having a good old time. We will become people pleasers who wants the world to love us, and just as a side note, it's possible to have a good old time in Jesus and joy. Don't go home and say, Ken and Barbara said, there's no fun in church, okay? <laughs> we cannot be silent, because these times in which we live calls for so much more. And I am talking to myself also because we are in this together. No one person can stand alone. We must come together in this time. The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King once said that our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. And so on that day of Pentecost, we saw the results of what occurred afterwards. The apostles went forward with holy boldness in the face of all kinds of adversities setbacks. And it's kind of interesting that Pentecost sits in a season where vacations happen. Things become quiet. And think about that. The wild Holy Spirit. This is the time when we are to be out, acting, holy, in holy boldness. You know, in the ideal world, that's every day, but it's just interesting. And know this, for those who want to step out in holy boldness, and I want to step out with whoever wants to do that. Those who came against the apostles did not understand, and they still do not understand today, that all things are possible with God, and no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And as Isaiah reminds us, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. And so this Pentecost, let's enter into some holy boldness. Okay? Yes. <laughs> Can I get an hallelujah? Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Please stand for the affirmation of our faith. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of my name. The one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, then was made again. For our sake he was crucified and upon his title. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the pure of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the 
the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please join me in the prayers of the people who will respond responsibly. To all people in their daily life and work. For our families and friends and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who are in justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to sick, for members of the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel, and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Kevin, our bishop. And for all bishops, for our priests, Barbara, and for all priests and ministers. For all who serve God in the church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially Magdalena, Russell, and Shelton. We pray for everyone affected by gun violence, war, poverty, and homelessness. In the Anglican Cycle of Prayer, the Anglican Church of South Africa. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy, mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, and we will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of the church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace to everyone. Peace. Okay, I don't have many, if any, announcements. <laughs> so we'll begin with thanks. Um, Thanks to the organist. Thank you very much. You stand up so people can see you. Thank you so much. It's okay. I heard a clap. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Um, to Fred and Joanne for providing coffee hour. Um, to Maria the Sexton who keeps our property um, in order. Um, also, there was. You may be wondering, like I said, the orange um, napkin there, this week, somewhere around Wednesday or Thursday, um, the bishop had sent out a message making us aware of national gun violence awareness. That's why you're seeing the orange. Um, and that's all I have there. Um, let's see, what else? I thank you all for being here this morning. I hope you're having a good day. If not, I pray that it gets better. Um, we are entering a wonderful season, and um, so welcome. Welcome to the new faces, welcome to the old faces. Um, and with that, let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Can we say an hallelujah? You all are very quiet this morning. Hallelujah. And, and that, that, I just shouted protocol here. So, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, okay. <laughs>
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah.
We who are many are one body. As we all share one bread, one cup. In the name of this congregation, I send you both forth, bearing these holy gifts, that those with whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage, hold fast that which is good, render to no one evil for evil, strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, show love to everyone, Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Mother of us all, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.